welcome to my garden. Uh, so for, for the new subscribers, I'm gardening in France, in southern, southwestern France, and um, I'm gardening in zone 8B. So first I wanted to thank to all of my subscribers. Thank you so much for supporting my videos. This is just so amazing to me because I love gardening and I'm excited to be able to grow and bring you more videos, uh, more projects. So this is like dream come true for me. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for all your likes, all your messages. It's wonderful. So anyway, uh, today what I'm going to do is plant two more, two more Japanese maples. And I've talked about it in my previous videos, if you have been following me, that I will do Japanese maple tour. Um, I can say that I do have pretty good amount of a pretty good collection of Japanese maples in my garden uh, now, and I started collecting them probably most of them last year, really. Some of them year before, and I started falling in love with them. Um, Japanese maples are just like a jewel in the garden because they have most amazing texture. They have a texture unlike any other plant. They can bring that interest to your garden, the colors, and oh, it's just so, so beautiful. And I tell you what, you if you buy one Japanese male, you plant one, it is hard to stop. And uh, before I should move forward, I should say that, um, uh, before I move forward, I would like to say a big thanks to Mr. Maple because um, of course, they can ship. They, they're in the U.S. If you're not familiar with Mr. Maple, check them out. They're in uh, North Carolina. Uh, they're brothers who started the business, um, you know, or took business after their father, and they've been doing uh, uh, producing Japanese maples for a long time. And um, uh, you know, they don't ship Japanese maples to uh, our area or in Europe or anywhere. You can only purchase them in the United States. But the really great thing that I benefited from it was that they do podcasts. They also have a podcast. It's, a, I think, Mr. Maple podcast. I'm not, uh, I'm not associated with them in any way. I just listen to them a lot, and it helped me to learn about Japanese maples. Uh, they gave me tremendous knowledge. And uh, when I work in the garden, I just put on a podcast. And I listen to all different about all the different varieties of Japanese maples. If you are interested in Japanese maples, that's a really great source to go to. That's what I'm trying to explain, I guess. Anyway, but that's where I really learned about Japanese maples. And I purchased just recently two more varieties that it's going into my garden. And um, so one is this beautiful Japanese maple. This is a whipping variety. And this, you can see, this is not a dissectum. Dissectum is the ones that have those lacy leaves. And this one is just so gorgeous. Oh, I, I, I just hurt myself in a project. So if you see it, I, <laughs> that's what it is. Um, so as this, uh, the name of this uh, Japanese maple is um, Ruby Cascade. And the Ruby Cascade will get up to about a meter and a half tall. Um, they will... Uh, and, and, you know, they, most of my Japanese maples will not get very big um, because clearly I don't have a really large area in this garden to plant really large trees. Um, I do like to collect some more Japanese maples, the ones that I would like to have in, on my list of plants. Um, but maybe for the backyard, when I start working in the backyard, then I can just design accordingly. But for this area, it's this area it just doesn't have enough room. So all of them. Um, that I have been planted in this garden, um, you know, I went knowingly that they can't get really big. So this one will be a meter and a half tall, and uh, this is a very, very beautiful variety. And you can see the colors a little more that is still preserved right here, because in the spring, when this just starts leafing out, it's clear, it's red and it's beautiful and but you can see the color variations it has a dark uh, like the green veins with the red edges and this will remain uh so it will preserve some of this color throughout the summer so um so all the old leaves will get kind of uh greenish but you can see the green is even very interesting color unlike many other greens this one is it has more of a um, like a chartreuse green, more of a lighter green, I don't know, but it has beautiful red edges. And also they do, they do change their color according to sun. Also, if they are too much in the shade, you probably won't see a whole lot of colors unless they're, even some red ones can be a little greenish or bronzy if it's too much shade. 
if they're in too much shade. But if um, if they get morning sun or certain or filtered sun, like dappled shade, that kind of, this kind of environment, they will ha have beautiful variations of color. So this is one that it's new and it's going into my garden. I'm very excited. The second Japanese maple that I'm so excited to be able to get, and these guys, you know, these are not easy to find. Um, I'm just excited to find this in in France because and actually it wasn't in France, it was in Netherlands. Um, but um, you know, sometimes you just kind of have to really search and until you find this particular variety. Like this one is a U.S. variety, but I, I think it's been created in U.S. I'm not hundred percent sure, but I'm I'm thinking it is. Um, this one called Peaches and Cream, and look at this. Isn't this just gorgeous? has all this look at these veins and the shape of the leaves this is absolutely very unique tree and uh, when it start, started leafing out it had a little more distinct red on the edges of these leaves and now as the uh, spring progressed i started losing uh, those colors a little bit but you can see this is just a beautiful beautiful variety i've been very excited honestly to get hold of this and um so as soon as i found that i was like oh my, okay i just need to get this right away um oh you can see some of this like look at this leaf right here you can see the color it's color still pre um, preserved a little bit on the edges it's very beautiful tree so i and this one will also get about six to eight feet i believe uh, so they're not going to get huge but also in my small garden i can always prune a little bit or remove some branches where they are not very dense that the light can still get through we should be able to manage that but so beautiful and um since we're talking about japanese maples today i would probably like to uh, i'd like to take you on a tour and kind of show you the japanese maples that i currently have in the garden um and then we'll just kind of go ahead and plant the trees right after that so let's go with me. Please ignore my holes. Um, I'm still kind of working on what I'm going to do with it. So it's not quite ready, the space. But um, I would like to take you this way and I'll show you. We'll start from here. But we can't just walk by this beautiful um, tulips look at this I, it's it's very difficult to walk by and without acknowledging how gorgeous this area turned out i am so pleased oh so beautiful okay so this is a bit of a shady area in, in this part of the garden um when we moved it was saturated with lots of things and you can see i go through and try to remove lots of weeds but uh, and i've already done that like two times so now it's starting to reproduce again. So I need to go ahead and tackle this again in this area. But this is ongoing until I probably just put a really heavy mulch down here. Um, so in this area, I wanted to show you, I have three Japanese maples. So one is the emerald lace. Now this is a lace variety and uh, it will get probably about four feet tall and it will weep. Uh, so it probably, you know, will take nice, good, um, spot right here and um, this is a really really beautiful variety um, has I don't know if you can see all the new growth has that coppery kind of orangey color a little bit but this um, uh, this variety is great uh, because it can take quite quite a bit of a sun also in the fall it will have very very red color so it will have a great it will be a great fall interest for this garden and for this space so here i have two more japanese maples that i'd like to show you now this one is a new variety uh, and i have two one I, it's planted way up there and then this particular one it's called uh, como it's c-o-m-o -O. it's an acer palmatum now this is an amazing look at this Look, look at this variation oh isn't this just stunning look at this dark green veins and the shape of the leaves are absolutely stunning and what can you plant to have such coppery gorgeous color variation with the green that brings absolute interest into the garden 
there is another one here that I have, and I am really, really thankful for this one. Um, this is a, actually been produced in the U.S., I believe, and I'm really thankful that I was able to get get it here in France. This one called Uncle Ghost, and Uncle Ghost is one of the ghost series. I think there is several that's uh, that's called like a Grandma Ghost, Baby Ghost. I think it's called there is one sister ghost anyway i can't get all of them here in france um i i saw someplace that i could probably get the baby ghost but um i do have an uncle ghost at the moment and the reason why they call them ghost series is because their legs are kind of look like the ghost hands so you can see they just have for example right here and i think that's why they call them the ghost because they just have that ghost looking hands or shape of the leaves so um but they all have different characteristics um there is one that is really beautiful that i'd like to get eventually but i know it gets quite big so i need to have a space for it it's called amber ghost and that one has just amazing amazing color coloration so i'm really excited about this look at the uniqueness and they probably will change as the time progresses like if you progress from the spring to summer all the colors probably will change in fact some of the colors have already changed and i wanted to get um here quicker to show you some of the very early spring colors unfortunately you know we had so much wind and rain like the last three days has been raining past four days has been very very harsh wind and so uh, i haven't even been able to get outside and do a whole lot um but um i'm glad that at least i can show you this uh, this japanese maples at least now and not later so here and i wanted to also bring your attention to these beautiful red bud trees now these red bud trees i think they have found themselves self-seeded from another area as i believe and when we moved here about eight years ago this tree was almost invisible i mean we didn't even see and it was covered in the bushes anyway so it was hard to see what what was really growing here until it started to take uh its own place and then finally i was like oh my goodness so there is a red bud growing here <laughs> so i was very excited and uh, you could see that i you know we had a really large tall pine tree that was planted right here by the house and uh, it was blocking the view of this red bud but George, maybe you could show from this side how beautiful these red buds are since we opened up this area and took out that large pine tree. And this area is just full of color. And I love the multi-stem, how, um, how beautiful this is. And I'm hoping it just continues to come this way and come you know, towards us as much as possible here. So be more visible from this other side. So it's absolutely stunning. Okay. So uh, now I have a few more Japanese maples here that I'd like to show you. So here I have very special Japanese maple, which I planted uh, last fall. This one called Ariadne. And this is, oh, oh my goodness, look at these colors. Isn't this just amazing? Like, uh, how can you even imagine having this kind of a, I mean, it's hard even for the painter to paint this, to imagine this. This is unbelievably beautiful. Look at close up. The, can you see close up, sweetie? How beautiful these colors. So this probably will get about six to eight feet and just kind of fill in this area, which is perfectly fine with me. I'm very excited about this tree. I didn't think I could find them in Europe, but I did. I was very happy. There's a couple of, a couple of our... our, our um, I uh, arb, uh, what it's called. Um, anyway, we'll just scratch that part. Um, here I have Bloodgood, and this was um, the Bloodgood I purchased a while back. Maybe not a while back. Maybe about no, it was last maybe last spring when I purchased the Bloodgood, and I was really excited about it. I know now since I'm learning about all this exotic um uh, japanese maples blood good is beautiful but it was you know it's okay it's very common uh, you can find them pretty much anywhere and it's going to be really pretty i love that dark beautiful color 
And then look at the, how beautiful the shape of the leaves are on this tree. It's just gorgeous. So this will get quite tall. And I thought, you know, this will be really pretty because I have room here for the tree to grow. And it continues to grow. Um, hopefully it will, be, will give us a little more privacy with our neighbors. But also will bring the really beautiful color, you know, red color to this area. So right behind me, this is another very interesting Japanese maple, which I planted last summer. Now this one called Beni Meiko. And uh, Beni Meiko is um, a very interesting tree. It's not going to get huge. It's going to get prob probably about four feet tall. Um, has just this uh, gorgeous wine almost. I don't know wine, but um, very, very unique color, almost dark cranberry or something. Um, so I don't, I'm not familiar, I haven't seen them, um, I guess, throughout the whole season. Uh, colors, it may change, uh, it depends, because now I get a little more sun here. The colors may change, it may become a little greener, but always remember that even when they get, uh, the Japanese maples take their summer color, which is maybe green, they will, will continue having that color variation the new growth which would be like a spring color so it will give that beautiful contrast and uh, and this is just gorgeous you can see from every side of the garden you just look at it and you know and it just brings amazing color so anyway this is a beni meiko and i believe in japanese when you see uh, any japanese maples with beni in the front that uh, uh, refers as red that's what i heard now i'd like to show you another beautiful japanese maple actually there is two this one called um i don't have the name on it i want to say inaba shidari, shidari but we'll put that on a screen um was it inaba shidari I can't remember i keep thinking mr yoga <laughs> shidari <laughs> um uh, that was uh, Mr. Maple's little, little daughter that couldn't say the name. It can keep saying the Adobe Adobe. Anyway, it was very cute. Um, so this one, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just put, put, put the name. I think it's called Inaba Shidari. But this is a whipping variety. You can see that it has a bisectum leaves, which is more of a that, you know, cut lace color. I'm sorry, a cut lace uh, shape of the tree. Yeah, very pretty. It, it, this is also very, um, uh, what I heard and what I read was that this one can take quite a bit of a sun. So it has, um, you know, it can be in a sunny space more so than some other ones, for example. Uh, and uh, this is a really beautiful one. So I have another really cool Japanese maple here. This one called Katsura. Now Katsura, I am really excited to plant this tree because this tree, first of all, you can see the bark. It's almost like, um, I don't know, corally pink. When, when it doesn't have leaves, it will still have amazing um, winter interest because of the bark color. But spring, I'm actually a little late for this one to show you because you can see the color has already been changing. But it, uh, this one uh, gets... Uh, when it starts leafing out, it's orange. It just comes this beautiful orange color. And then uh, you can see it has this chartreuse green. It's almost yellow with these beautiful red edges. Stunning tree, absolutely stunning tree. I'm very excited. And I'm very excited for the contrast. I decided to plant my Japanese maples also for the, uh, accordingly to fall color because I have lots of reds, I will have yellow, I will have coppers, and then in the fall, it will be just gorgeous colors in the garden when they start changing their colors. So here I have another Japanese maple, and this one called uh, Shushidari, S-H-U Shidari. And this is a very, very unique Japanese maple. Um, I believe it's going to be gold or uh, uh, orange in the fall, but you can see the color is so beautiful. I, I absolutely love this color variations. You can see the copper, uh, green, coppery colors on the edges. It just brings such a unique um, colors into the garden and the also texture. So here's a couple of other ones. Let's, let's see. 
this particular one is called Ukigumo. And this one is, look how beautiful this one is. Um, it has this variegated leaves in the spring. And I think it does turn a kind of greenish in the summer. But it has this gorgeous variegated leaves. There's a little bit of a pink. And I, if I'm not mistaken, this one also called as, um, maybe I think it's called white cloud, just because um, certain areas where the weather is white for this tree, for example, it, I, I don't believe it turns white in a humid areas, but areas where it has a co uh, cooler evenings, usually the tree will become more white. And, uh, you know, the way, you know, as it grows, with the white color, it just brings very interesting um, uh, color into the garden. So this is a very interesting tree, but also has a very reliable, uh, beautiful, orangey, uh, reddish color in the fall, which is really different than other reds. It's very pretty. So um, I just wanted to go here really quick. Now this one is called Atropurpurium, and uh, looks like it has some burns on the leaves. It could be from dryness, maybe, for, okay. Um, this tree is very, very pretty. Uh, it has a gorgeous red color. You can see last fall, it became scarlet red. It was so beautiful. And um, now this one's also, if they are in the, uh, in the shade, it probably will not get to this beautiful color. It probably will stay a little more bronzy green. Uh, in the shady areas, but the minute sun, uh, it gets a little sun, um, it does change to this gorgeous, um, gorgeous color. So here I have another, I have a couple of more here that are really gorgeous. This one actually I just planted because I purchased them a while ago and it was sitting here and couldn't get to it. I wanted to do a video, but other things got on the, in the way and uh, I decided just to go ahead and plant. Now this one is also US variety. And this one I was very excited to find. I've actually bought them at the same time as the peaches and cream. This one is a, uh, not a palmatum. This one is a Sherissa wanum, um, a Japanese maple. And this one called Johin. This is a very, very beautiful variety. And you can see the Sherissa wanum Japanese maples have uh, very distinct leaves. They are a little more wider. Uh, their shape is a little different. Um, they're just very pretty. I do have several of these varieties, Shereza Wanamu variety. Um, they, they, they interest me very much. They're good, absolutely stunning. I'm really excited to see the, um, how it progresses. Oh, and look at this Clematis. This is the Clematis that we planted together, two Clematis. Now this one was called a pink champagne. If you guys haven't seen my previous video where I, where I planted this Clemata, and it didn't have a picture, but look how beautiful this clemata is. Now this is a group set, a group two clemata. But look at the colors. Isn't this just stunning? And how, look how large the flowers are. I absolutely love them. And I'm really thankful that I planted here because I think it's going to be really pretty in this area. Oh, let's talk about this Japanese maple. So this one is a very interesting one. It's called... Um, uh, Olsen's, Olsen's Frosted Strawberry. And look at this leaf. Isn't this just amazing? Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Oh, so this is very cool. Color. Now, this one is going to be probably about six feet tall as well. It's not going to be huge. So it's not going to interfere with anything too much. Um, wind broke one branch because we had really strong wind but it will recover will bounce back it unfortunately just broke right there but this is a very stunning variety i'm very excited that i was able to find that i was searching and searching for a while there is a on your left here there is another sherissa wanum variety that is called uh, moonrise and this one is absolutely stunning look at this color and uh, this will probably have, all summer, we'll have that um, coral, raspberry, chartreuse colors that is constantly going to be on this tree. Uh, this moonrise is absolutely gorgeous. And I think uh, this one is a, a relatively new variety in the market. 
um, there is another one, similar one, it's called Autumn Moon, it's a little different, it's very, very beautiful, and I have that as well, we'll get to it, but this one is called Moonrise, and this is stunning. Um, this is uh, my new shed, uh, I think one of our viewers said, oh, I'm so happy you finally have your shed, and I'm so happy I have this shed, I really didn't have anywhere I could put my garden stuff, I mean, I could have had them in a garage, but it's such a long ways to go back and forth and get stuff. This was just such a perfect spot for me to just grab whatever I need really quick. I still need to get shelved and organized there. And then, of course, I still have to landscape around. I still haven't been able to do much here, but, you know, everything in time, it will all come. So here, I have another beautiful Japanese maple. This one called Rainbow. And Rainbow has these amazing, amazing colors. Look at, oh, for example, look at this tree. Look, look at this leaf right here. It has this amazing variegation of, um, uh, you know, dark red with raspberry, absolutely stunning. So yes, and um, rainbow is, um, uh, what I heard is not very stable variety. I am, this is going to be interesting to see if I will be able to maintain um, that variegation because um, of what I heard is that um, the previous tree, which is the solid red color, could take over. And if, when we see more of those solid colors that we need to prune them in order to keep preventing from the old tree taking over the new one. So, you know, I'm just learning about all this. It's interesting because if you're interested about this tree, which is absolutely stunning, if you want to play with it, then see if you can figure it out. Anyway, you can check with Mr. Maple because they have a whole video, I believe, about this. It's very interesting. My baskets are absolutely, absolutely cute. I am so excited to have these baskets here with these tulips. Oh, so beautiful. Garden just looks so beautiful. Everything just looks so pretty. It's like it's hard for me to even go home and do anything inside. So here I have another very small Japanese maple and this one called uh, Benihime. It's a Ace of Palmetum Benihime. This is a very interesting variety. So you can see it has a gorgeous color. Now this one will be only like two feet tall, two feet wide, and it's going to be this really pretty clump here with a gorgeous interest. Super, super cute. If you have a small place, that could be something that you might look, take a look, you know, to consider. Uh, there is another really, really awesome Japanese maple. This one I purchased last spring when I was just getting into them. Uh, and this one called uh, Phoenix. And Phoenix, oh my goodness, this tree arrived like, I don't know, it was maybe, I want to say one centimeter. It was, it was, maybe it was a little bigger than that, but it was so small. I, was, I couldn't even see them and I didn't even know it would survive. But look at this color. It has this, when, when uh, it starts uh, to leaf out in the spring, it has this most gorgeous pink color that it's unlike any other ones. So stunning. One of my favorite Japanese maples right here, you can see, this is also, it's not going to be super big, um, you know, most of them. And they're very slow growing. So, I mean, it could get probably five to six feet within, um, I don't know, 10 years. So they're really worthwhile planting. This one has, look at how beautiful the bark color. This one called a ruby star. And I believe this is a palmatum as well. Let me just look. I am pretty sure it's a palm. Yes, this, this is a pa palmatum ruby star. And it has this gorgeous leaves because it has, look at that. I mean, it has this amazing green center to where it just shoots out like a little stars and looks beautiful with these veins. I'm very excited about this tree. Then, whoo, then I have this amazing tree, which I was debating forever to get this one or not. In some places, this was very, um, very expensive, and I was able to find find one that was not super expensive, which was very. I, I just went ahead and got it, and then started reading about it. Now this one is a dissectum. It's called Ice Dragon, but this is Acer. Okay, ready. Pseudocibodianum. Uh, so this one is mix of uh, mix of different kinds of like Sibodianum and 
um, I, I have to look that up, but I'll tell you later. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll pop that on the, on the screen if, if you're that technical. But you can see Ice Dragon. This is a mix of different trees. I think Jap maybe Korean maple and then Sibyldianum, a variety that it's mixed. But this is a very pretty, very pretty variety. I'm hoping that it will take the sun in the summer, honestly, because most uh, Japanese maples really don't like hot afternoon sun. However, this one said that yes, it can take sun, but this is going to be really hard, sunny area. I have to keep an eye on it. I mean, if I see that it's not taking it well, I'll just have to move it. But for now, it's going to be gorgeous. Look at the color. I think it's just so unique. It's, I mean, this unlike anything, this color just brings interest like nothing brings to the garden. So I'd like to go continue this way because I have several on the other side. So here I have Wilson's Dwarf Pink. And uh, I always, if you guys think there is a little bowl with the water, I always keep water because I have hedgehogs coming to the garden. And we've spotted them at night coming drinking water. I really want to keep encouraging them to come to the garden. So I always keep this bowl of water here because I know that they will come through and I want them to continue coming to my garden. So if you guys see a weird bowl sitting here, that's what it is. So this one is a Wilson's Dwarf uh, Pink. So this one will get about six feet tall. And um, uh, honestly, when it started blooming, it was more pink color. Now, I think they, you know, with the having, uh, you know, the sun exposure changed it more into the copper. But oh my goodness, you think it's just stunning color or what? Okay, so um, I think we're going to stop here just because it's getting to be really long, and I just realized that I still have quite a few to go to show you guys. So we'll just do this in two parts. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this video, and then look for my next video, and then I will show you my other Japanese maples uh, in my part two video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Stay tuned and uh, please don't forget to subscribe to my videos. Thank you all of you for all the support and messages. Love everyone. So um, I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.